hold it back as far as you can, buddy. Right side only. Right side only. This is men's a collegiate A only. Hey, welcome back to the Glycogen Cycling Channel. So today we are, this weekend, we're at the Auburn Cycling Classic. So today in this video, we're gonna be going over the road race and I'll do a little breakdown of that. And dude, it is, it's cold. Look at this. 44. <laughs> but yeah, we got a pretty cool setup. So we're on this little hill here and then the race is going by in front. So I'm just gonna sit in the warmth of my car for a little bit and my race goes off in just about, just under two hours. So my team kit's not in yet. So we're gonna be racing in the VC kit today. So hopefully this brings me some good luck. Don't let me down, bro, don't let me down. So after that initial craziness to start the race, we're finally on our way. Uh, just a little backstory of what actually happened in that previous clip. So the collegiate A race was ongoing about two hours before the start of ours, and they were about a lap behind based on the schedule. So I, honestly, I don't think they left them enough time. They left them like two hours to do 56 miles so wasn't really enough time but anyways they decided to run three races at the same time on this course and they had a race go off right before us and then they put us in and as soon as we were about to start the collegiate a's turned the corner and were right behind us so we went off and you know it was a kind of a fast start but the official decided he wanted to stop the race. We were, we were, you know, plenty far ahead, but they were on their last lap, so they were probably going to pick it up. There was going to be attacks, and they didn't want us to be, you know, in the way when they were making their finish. F fine enough, sure. Um, but I just think the official could have done a better job at stopping the race, uh, you know, coming into the lane with a pack of riders going 30 miles an hour is not super safe um he probably should have just gone ahead of us and then stopped and waved us down but you know that being said he came into our lane and nearly caused a crash by some guy uh almost running into him so that was kind of you know a weird start but anyways they let the collegiate days pass and then we were finally on our way so this race took place in Auburn, Alabama on the 15th of February, as you saw on, on the intro. And this was a 56 mile race, as I just said, and it was 3,000, just under 3,000 feet of climbing for six laps. And it was pretty much just all up and down rollers, nothing super steep, nothing super long, just a bunch of little 50 to 100 foot climbs. And, you know, that just added up to 3,000 feet. 
So this was probably the longest downhill section, but again, not super steep. We had a wind coming over our left hand side, but wasn't enough to really, you know, make any super decisive moves in the crosswinds or anything. The trees were blocking a lot of it, so the wind wasn't really a factor, even though it was blowing around and you could feel it. <clears throat> so this race was kind of just a, I'm going to call it an opener for the season. I did one race before this, but as you probably know, if you've been following me on Instagram, had a pretty bad crash, had to get some stitches in my shoulder about three weeks before this race. So I was just about healed up the time this race started and I wanted to just get a race under my belt, get the confidence back and <clears throat> basically just wanted to finish this race. You know, I always go out to do as best as I can, but as long as I finished, kept all my skin and gained a little bit of confidence, that was a win in my book. And I think I accomplished that goal. So. That was pretty fun. Um, so watch here. This guy's glasses fall off. And whoops. There you go. <laughs> That's about a $200 loss right there. Uh, so listen to this in-race commentary as this breakaway is just getting established up the road. Let's all say a small prayer. After listening to that, you kind of had two different opinions. And personally, I was on the side of the guy in the red and black saying, you know, it's real early on. And, you know, it is. It's the first move of the race. I don't even totally know the whole course yet because I've never done this race before. So, you know, I thought for sure that move was going to get pulled back. And then that next move was the move that was going to be the game or the race winner and unfortunately i was not uh correct in my my guess but you know is what it is so laps two through five i'd say we had a really good rotation going and we had about 10 maybe 15 guys all rotating together trying to pull that break back and we had them within 20 seconds for a long time but you know a couple guys would pull out and then a couple guys would attack and bridge up to the move and then it would kind of just fall apart so if you were working you were kind of at you know the the downfall of all that so I was actually working in the move, trying to pull it back for everyone, but didn't really work out. So that's kind of the thing you got to notice when you're in a race with not too many teams to control it. So in this race, there was maybe, you know, a couple teams with two guys, maybe one team with three guys, and then the rest were all just single riders working for themselves, trying to get a result in the early season. And... You know, that's, that's something you got to notice when you're racing because usually if you don't have a team, you don't or are not required to do any work, basically. And even though everyone doesn't have a team, no one really felt like they, you know, it was their responsibility to pull the brake back. So breakaway got away, 
bridge moves made it up there and that was kind of just the story of the race unfortunately so this is the final stretch of the race right here and it's a slight very like false flat downhill it's probably like less than half a percent but the wind was getting blocked by the trees up ahead here so it, you really could hammer this section and get some good speed going and that's going to be important to remember for the last part of the race i noticed that early on so kind of why i made the decision i did in the early or the later part of the race um so after watching all bridge attempts get up to the breakaway this little move got out and got a decent gap going seemed like the guys were motivated in there so i was like what the hell may as well you know make an effort to try to make something of this race because otherwise i'm just going to be pack fill i knew early on that i didn't want to go through that last corner with a full pack of people it was kind of sketchy there's a lot of gravel on the inside you can't take it really fast it's kind of off camber so it was it was kind of just like you want to go through that sing, single file or by yourself because you can go a lot faster and i know this says six out of six laps but this is actually going into one lap to go so this breakaway or bridge move i should say breakaway from the main field because the breakaway already won at this point. They have like three minutes on us, so there's no way we're gonna catch them. But I end up bridging up to this move, put in a really big effort, but you know, was feeling pretty good towards the end of this race. The beginning was a little rough. I didn't get to ride the day prior, so that was not ideal, but I was feeling good towards the end of this race and was able to bridge up to this and if you look at the back camera, you can see we have, you know, a decent gap. Um, but as soon as I got up to this, I don't know if they thought I was with the field or what, but they kind of just like sat up, it seemed. And the field was coming with a lot of speed and kind of just, you know, basically caught up to us on this little hill here. You can see I was doing 250 watts at one point, so... You know, we really needed to punch over that climb, but or this little hill here, not a climb, but wasn't able to. So that kind of, uh, that move just like fell apart. So now this is the last lap and <clears throat> it's basically just fighting for minor positions at this point. I think we're sprinting for, you know, maybe not even 10th, probably like 12th or something. So it wasn't really you know, you don't want to take any serious risks to get to the the finish line for 12th place. So I knew I wanted to try to get away, whether it's earlier, earlier on in this last lap or towards the end. So as we skip ahead, this was the crucial part of the race, or at least kind of for me. There was two guys that made a move up the road. So they were, they went on kind of earlier in the lap, probably like two miles into the lap by turn one, basically. And <clears throat> we were kind of, I guess at this point, kind of lollygagging, but we had a good, um, there was a good effort going to try to pull them back and we could basically see them. So a couple of attacks going, and this downhill section I knew was super fast. So I knew if I could use this downhill to try and build up a lot of speed and then use that momentum to try to uh, get ahead. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that's like my favorite kind of attack is that little slingshot. I don't have a super big pop, so I can't really get you know, that initial separation from a really big power sprint. But I can, if, if I get that gap, I can hold a lot of power for a while. So if I can use my momentum where they're slowing up on the hill and, you know, we hit 40 miles per hour on that downhill, 
If I can use this momentum to slingshot past him, that's like perfect. So I'm coming up and I'm not going full gas right now because I want at least like one guy to come with me. We're still about, you know, three miles from the finish. So probably like five kilometers, maybe. Maybe just under that. But end up shooting past them, shoot past the two guys that were off the front and look back and I was like, uh, no one's with me, but I have a gap. So <clears throat> gotta commit at this point. So at this point it's like all in, you know, last lap have probably, you know, just under three kilometers to go. I'm trying to think, cause as soon as we make that last turn, there's probably about one kilometer left. So at this point, I think I paced it really well up that hill, even though my speed is low. But at this section, definitely should have gone harder. And I could have gone harder. I don't know why I didn't, but, um, you know, I'm holding under 350 watts. So I should be going about 28 at this point to try to get a bigger gap because, <clears throat> as you'll see, if I... If I was able to hold 400 through this section, I may have been able to hold them off, but I didn't for whatever reason. So here we go. Going through that last corner solo, which is what I wanted, got through clean, and now it's just full gas to the finish as hard as I can go. Look back one last time and just send it. So here we go, trying to get as arrow as possible to try to get as much benefit as possible. And you know, I'm just trying to keep it above 450 watts basically the whole way. And at one point, I, I honestly thought I might have had them, but <clears throat> as you'll see, I still have a pretty big gap out of that in that rear camera in the top left corner, but it just wasn't enough dude they came up so quick and you know i'm still trying to go full gas but i can just hear the tires going past me at this point and he just flew past me like i was standing still so that was kind of the death sentence for me and you know i kind of just sat up at this point because you know there's no point in sprinting for 20th <laughs> So that was the race. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you liked it. Leave a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video for the time trial that happened right after this race. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.